I'm Doug, one of Micro Center's knowledge experts, and I'd like to talk to you about a deceptively simple little device called a surge protector. Now, back in the days when our power systems were being developed, they did an amazingly good job of making them really good power for electric lights, motors, heaters, all that heavy lifting stuff. But nowadays, we've got computers and monitors and printers and all kinds of electronics. There are computers in practically all of our modern appliances. And they need cleaner power than they usually get from the power company. The problem here is that the power company can't control it, everything that comes into your house from the power company. Those wires can run a very long distance. If a lightning strike happens on the other side of town, a little bit of that is going to make it all the way to your house. That little bit might be just a few microseconds at a few hundred volts. Well, that's enough to damage a computer chip. If your neighboring factory has a big motor and it's churning away and suddenly it freezes, that causes something called a load dump. All the energy that was in that moving stuff in the factory has to go somewhere. And the place it goes is back down the power lines and some of it goes all the way to your house. For that matter, if there's a problem with the power system and a section of town gets cut off, a circuit breaker blows that, that isolates one part of town, surges go down the line for that too. Anything that causes the voltage to go above normal qualifies as a surge, and you need to protect yourself against that. Now, surge protectors look pretty simple. I mean, this is the, the ultimate simple surge protector. It's a plastic box with some outlets, a switch, and a power cord. So, why do we need to worry about it? They're not very expensive. Well, let me get into a little more detail. First off, what do we have to protect? In my case, the speakers, even, have a microprocessor in there. The computer, the hard drives, the funny little digital clock, the printer, all of this stuff has semiconductors in it that will suffer from power surges. What we do in here, there's a little component in this called a metal oxide varistor. And it has the unique property that when the voltage across it gets too high, it starts absorbing energy. How much energy can it absorb? Well, that gets us into how do you select a power strip. There's a number of considerations. One, of course, is how many things do you need to plug in? And as a matter of fact, an awful lot of people buy a power strip and they don't worry about whether it's a surge protector too. If it doesn't say it's a surge protector, you don't have any surge protection. If it does say so, you need to worry about, well, how good is the protection? What's it do for me? Well, all surge protectors protect you from too high a voltage. The primary rating on a surge protector is called a joule, J-O-U-L-E, it's a rating of energy. And what it's talking about is how much energy that little metal oxide varistor can absorb without damage. The higher the number, the higher the surge it can withstand, or in another sense, the longer you can keep it working without having it fail. Eventually metal oxide varistors will, because they get damaged on every surge, will eventually fail. It may take many years. Very few people have a problem with it, but they can fail. If you were to buy a surge protector with a rating of, say, 300 joules, it will protect your equipment, but the first big lightning storm might cause a problem. If you buy one that's good for 3,000 joules, 10 times as much, it's simply going to last longer and it will withstand higher energy levels. Probably mostly a concern for people in areas where there are serious power problems. Uh, if you get a lot of thunderstorms, you're in one of those areas. And 
let's be honest here, no surge protector is going to protect you from a direct lightning strike. If the lightning hits the pole outside your house, you're going to be in trouble. On the other hand, you need protection from all the lightning strikes anywhere on that power grid. Now, what else do we need to worry about? Well, one concern already mentioned is how many outlets? How many things do you need to plug in? And don't neglect things because practically everything involved in a computer needs to be plugged into a surge protector. Another concern is not just the power, but other things that get connected to your computer system. If you're using a dial-up networking connection to get to the internet, you need to have your phone connection protected by the surge protector as well. And better surge protectors have separate jacks for your phone line. If you have cable TV, modern cable TV systems also can have surge problems. Uh, lightning can hit the cable TV line just as easily as it hits anything else on a pole outside your house. Uh, so there are F connectors, the standard screw-on coax cable connectors, on some surge protectors as well. If you have a cable network connection to the internet, that means you have Ethernet cables that run to your computer from somewhere, and you may want to have those protected too, because in a lot of cases, the motherboard is where your Ethernet connection goes, and blowing a motherboard is expensive, particularly on laptops. All of these things add up to, well, it's just plain good insurance to have a good surge protector. You don't have to spend a fortune. Don't be too cheap. Don't buy the ones that don't have any surge protection at all. But consider it safely, as just, it's an insurance policy. If you've got a $500 computer, spending $20 to keep it safe is money well spent. Thanks for listening.